was what was the most violent piece of criticism you received <laughs> for your approach to treating stroke teaching grammar? Uh, and mostly, I haven't had any violent or threats of violence <laughs> yet. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not even sure what my approach to treating stroke teaching grammar is. I mean, without wanting to do a sales pitch here, but in my book, How to Teach Grammar, I outline several different ways of teaching grammar. There's a chapter at the end which says how not to teach grammar. Uh, and that's ruffled a few feathers, I think, because in my chapter on how not to teach grammar is really don't do it that kind of very traditional, boring way that I guess, in a sense, Ken was subject to in his German classes. Uh, and I don't think that amongst the people that I meet in my travels, or the people I train, there's any kind of, uh, nobody questions the idea that uh, we should hang on to some kind of old-fashioned, boring, chalk and talk kind of approach mm -hmm. to teaching grammar. Although, I mean, I'm not averse to the fact that occasionally that may be very appropriate in small doses. So, um, uh, yeah, as, as yet I would say that I'm, I must say, in a sense, pr protected myself from criticisms by saying there's all sorts of ways of teaching grammar, and there's as many different ways of teaching grammar as there are contexts, as there are classrooms, and as there are teachers, and as there are students. So it's kind of been, it's the diversity and the, uh, the, the multiple options approach is one I actually favor rather than a prescriptive, you must do it this way kind of approach. That's how I get out of the problem of being threatened by people on dark streets who don't have that approach. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my question is, um, how do you go about motivating teachers to want to develop? And what are the key ingredients of an effective inset session on professional development? <laughs> Quite a lot. Um, well, the first thing that springs to my mind is definitely enthusiasm. You know, be enthusiastic about what you do. That's key because enthusiasm spreads. So if you're enthusiastic, people will pick up on that. Um, second thing is the, the good old Rogerian qualities, uh, genuineness being maybe the central one. So, you know, be yourself, which also means experiment, so don't be your static, I'm stuck self, obviously. Try out new things, experiment, but be genuine, give yourself in the classroom. And then respect, you know, be a good listener, be interested, respect the people who you're working with, and create opportunities for, for, for their contribution. And then, you know, try to have a democratic classroom. And uh, if, if democracy is within you, then that will be the starting point. And then create, make it interactive. Um, and I think the, these are the key ingredients. Make sure it's interactive, but also have your own aims. So have a good mix between getting the people involved, but also making sure that there is some input coming from you as well, or there is something that people feel they're taking. 